friend Sheila Gunn Reed, our chief reporter, who is live on location at the Saskatchewan, Alberta town of Lloydminster. It's a very interesting city. It actually straddles the border. Sheila, great to see you. How are you doing out there? Yeah. Nope. <laughs> I don't know if you can hear me for the horn honking and the wind. It's cold. We've been here since 745. But there are a few hundred people here. And there's trucks. Um, it looks like Canada Day behind me with all the flags. Uh, so we're just on the Saskatchewan side where people are getting a, a little bit more money in their pocket because of the Scott Lowe government's efforts to shelter the people here from the carbon tax by not collecting the carbon tax on their um, home heating and electricity because they are they're able to do that thanks to a crown corporation that acts as the energy distributor here but i mean lots of albertans lots of people from saskatchewan the entire parking lot across the way is full of trucks semi-trailers rvs tractors it feels like the convoy again it looks like it it looks like a lot of fun it looks cool but not deep freezing although you look warm in your hat and i saw your footage earlier of the snacks it looks like there was a grill and you know i guess it's uh that was breakfast out there i'm very interested Mm -hmm. in what the snacks were i hear some honking it looks like a bit of a party i mean i'm from calgary and you know one of the fun things about calgary is the stampede breakfast for one week a year Everywhere you go, there's people cooking up pancakes and sausages and serving coffee for free to walkers by, and it just yeah. has a team spirit. That's the vibe I was getting from your footage. It looks like that's how it is. That's completely it. So there was a slow roll of the trucks through town. They went to the Alberta side, and then they came back a couple of times. But yeah, when everybody got back, they came back to a full pancake breakfast, sausage, bacon, pancakes, beans, coffee, juice. Uh, we did take part, that's for sure, because we were here really early um, and we needed some warm food in our belly. Um, but yeah, free pancake breakfast, um, very family friendly, despite all the F Trudeau flags. Lots of little kids here. Um, and there, you know, there are people walking up and down the side of the highway giving out donuts and treats. Um, and it's nothing but honks of support. Yeah, that's us enjoying the pancake breakfast. That's our uh, favorite volunteer, Lise. She's from Saskatchewan. And then Kean and his beautiful fiance. Uh, we're taking a quick break from working so hard. Well, that's great. And I'm glad you gave me the whole menu breakdown. Yeah. Now I'm even You're more welcome. jealous that I wasn't there. <laughs> now I see some flags behind you. Again, I mentioned earlier that the uh, truckers and the freedom movement has appropriated the symbols of Canada, which I find delicious yep. because I remember uh, 20 years ago, the Liberal Party tried to own the flag and own the symbols yep. of patriotism. And they did so to fight the separatists in Quebec and the referendum. And it's amazing to me now when when regime media and liberal politicians say anyone who says words like freedom or flies the Canadian flag are suspect, they have actually conceded that the patriotic symbols belong to the freedom-fighting grassroots. It's really quite a change from 30 years ago. Well, and I think a lot of these people in another time would probably have considered themselves to be soft Western separatists. Um, But I think a lot of the people here have that same sentiment that Tamara Leach had, that she went into the Freedom Convoy being sort of finished with Canada. And now she feels it's something important and uh, something to fight for. And that's what we're seeing here. I'm old enough to remember um, when this would be behind me, the majority of the flags would be Alberta or Saskatchewan flags and not Canadian flags. That's just the way it is out here. Um, But, you know, we're seeing the inverse where people are realizing that Canada is ours and it doesn't belong to the Laurentian elite. Yeah, and you know, I remember when Preston Manning um, debuted the Reform Party, his motto was the West wants in. And he basically said, hey, separatists, we can reform things. So it didn't quite work out that way, but he gave people some constructive hope. And I'm going to say that Pierre Polyev is doing the same thing. Uh, Aaron O'Toole, the last conservative leader, was disgraceful. Uh, He wouldn't be seen with the truckers. He... 
was a carbon tax aficionado. He said, oh, I'll just call it a carbon levy. Uh, that's how different I am. I mean, just an absolute sellout. And that demoralized conservatives, demoralized Westerners. And I think people uh, felt, well, what's the point? Every party in Ottawa is against me. But, but the truckers actually were the ones who managed to throw overboard Aaron O'Toole and Jason Kenney. The truckers are responsible for the two greatest acts of political hygiene in Canada of 2022. And Pierre Polyev, in his own way, has embraced the freedom movement. He's certainly leading the charge on the anti-carbon tax stuff. He's cautiously talking about transgenderism, cautiously talking about immigration, as opposed to being absolutely a cheerleader for the liberal point of view, like Aaron O'Toole was. I, I think, oh, there's some honking. I think yep. that Pierre Polyev is giving Westerners in Saskatchewan, Alberta, and even BC some hope that maybe things can be fixed in Ottawa. I note that some of those flags are upside down, which is a signal of distress, which is true, but they are still Canadian flags that are upside down. Yeah, well, and let's not forget that it's not just Pierre Polyev that is giving Westerners hope. It's also our own premiers, Scott Moe, Daniel Smith, and, you know, their their constant fight for provincial autonomy against the federal government. They're showing these people that there is a way forward within confederation where the provinces have more control of their fate. You know, you're so right to mention those provincial premiers. I remember when basically the entire map was liberals, I'm, I'm speaking provincially now, liberals, New Democrats. Um, I mean, Doug Ford is still pretty useless as a conservative, but now you've got Scott Moe, who is a hero. You've got Atlantic premiers willing to stand up and even challenge their own party. Um, Doug Ford, late to the game, is sort of saying, yeah, I don't like the carbon tax so much anymore. Um, I think that there is a unity amongst premiers. I think, and and in Alberta, especially to go from a carbon tax collecting Rachel Notley to a freedom fighting Danielle Smith is, is quite an about face. I think there's some reasons for optimism. And I'm always careful about saying that because how many times do you have to be burned? But um, I tell you, seeing these grassroots protests gives me a bit of hope. Last word to you, Sheila. Well, you know, it, it really does. It. It is much like the Freedom Convoy where Canadians who are sometimes diametrically opposed, sometimes it feels like the provinces are constantly fighting with each other, Alberta, Quebec. <laughs> but, you know, this is something that really unites people. And we've talked to, you know, dozens and dozens of people in the crowd today, and it is all the same thing. If they haven't had to make tough decisions for their family because of the carbon tax, they know they will. It's moms and dads complaining that they have to work too much, that they're seeing their kids too little because of Justin Trudeau's punishing tax on everything. They're talking about how young people will not be able to afford the same things that their parents have. These are things that unite Canadians. This is not just a Western issue. This is something that resonates with people in Toronto, Montreal, Ottawa, Lloyd Minster, Edmonton, Calgary, Vancouver. This is truly a problem imposed on Canadians by Justin Trudeau for no other reason than that he can't. Well, I, I tell you, I really wish I was out there. I had that feeling during the trucker convoy. I went to Ottawa for a few yeah. days. I loved every second of it. I'm deeply grateful that I did go. Of course, I couldn't get out to Coots because I was on the no-fly list because I wasn't jabbed. Uh, now, just to see this, I mean, we've been talking to Drea out there in Nanaimo. In a moment, we're going to go to Adam Sos in Calgary. You're uh, in Saskatchewan there. We saw some footage from the Atlantic. Alexa Lavoie was in Ottawa. It feels like we got the old band back together. We're covering the truckers uh, <laughs> coast to coast this time. They're joined by not just truckers, but farmers and ordinary people of all sorts. It really is an exciting feeling, and it is really fit for Rebel News because we tell the other side of the story. So much of the media is lecturing us about why no, 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 carbon taxes are actually really good for you. Uh, I mean, just an astonishing story in the CBC about how experts say the carbon tax is good for you. Or experts. Who's an expert in my own life other than my, myself? No, 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 you're wrong. Experts say this is really good. Like, to, this is just the regime media all over again, just like they were during the truckers. Yep 
just no, no, you guys are wrong. You guys are January 6th insurrectionists. You're probably violent. We're just going to read our press releases from Trudeau. They're doing the same playbook again, but it looks like no one's listening to the bad guys anymore.